All right, let's talk about the total derivative and exact equations. So far we've talked about uh, differential equations that you can solve through simple integration. We've talked about linear equations and we've talked about separable equations and each one of those has their own method of solution. They haven't been too bad. To talk about the next uh, kind of equation, which is an exact equation, we actually need to uh, come up with some more calculus background that will help us along and justify some of the, uh, the, the solution methods that we take. So we have to jump back into some multi-variable calculus to do that. And it's not really bad. What it's going to be is kind of an extension of chain rule that you may or may not have seen. It's likely that if you took, or if you're taking Math 2200 Advanced Calculus, you will see more about this. Okay, here's how it works. So suppose we have a multivariable function, a function of more than one variable. So here I have f of x1, uh, x2, x uh, through xn, and, and all of those possibly dep depend on t and t itself. So we have a function that depends on all of these kinds of things. Here's how the total derivative is defined. It's going to look like a mouthful, um, and we're going to get through it because you're going to see that it's not so bad. So we have df dt equals, we have di f by di x1, the partial of f with respect to x1, times dx1 by dt, plus di f di x2, dx2 by dt, and so on. We go through all of the variables like this and then add the partial of f with respect to t itself. Okay. It's really easy to mess this up. It looks really complicated, but if you draw out a little bit of a tree, it isn't so bad. So watch how I like to represent this. This is how I was taught, and it really worked for me. So if f depends on x1, x2, all the way through, through xn, and possibly on t itself, and I wanna find df by dt, I'm thinking of x1 as depending on the t, x2 is depending on the t, all the way through here. I have this tree, and if I go down all of the branches taking the corresponding derivatives, I hit every single one of the things that I need, okay? So if you wanna use something like this to represent uh, these multivariable functions, that's a good idea. So we're gonna take this and do a quick example of it just to show you that it's really not so bad. And um, well, let's see what this is all about. So I have a few functions given here, x equals t to the four fifths, y equals, uh, it looks like arctan of t, my favorite function, and we have z equals t squared. And what we want to do is, given this function of t right here, which is, or, uh, of, sorry, these multivariable functions, x, y, z, and t are all the variables here. We have a t sine x plus x cos y plus z plus t cubed. We would like to find df dt, the total derivative. So I'm going to draw a similar tree. f depends on x, y, z, and t here and each of the x, y, and z are all dependent on t themselves. So if I draw this out, finding df by dt is going to be equal to, using this formula, di f by the first variable, di x, dx by dt, plus di f, di y, second variable, dy, dt, di f, di z, dz, dt, and then the partial with respect to t. So we have this uh, whole bunch of quantities here that it looks like we have to calculate, but each one of them in themselves really isn't too bad. So let's go forward and uh, see if we can do this. So I want, first of all, di f di x. So I'm gonna treat the y and the t as constants, thinking about how partial derivatives work. And I'm going to get this. So it looks like I'm gonna get a t cos x, uh, di f di x. I want the derivative of this term with respect to x. Uh, so that x is going to drop down. I'm going to get a cos of y. It doesn't look like the other two quantities here depend on x. So that's all. And then I want to multiply this thing by dx dt. And dx dt is going to be 4 fifths t to the minus 1 fifth. And that's just the derivative of that x of t with respect to t. And then we're going to go through and do the others as well. So I need di f di y, dy dt. So I'm going to look through this equation again, this function f, and there's only one thing that depends on y here. So the derivative with respect to y is going to be minus x sine of y. So minus, uh, whoops, let's get this right, minus x sine of y. 
and I want to mi multiply that by dy by dt. And the derivative of an arctan function uh, is going to be here 1 over t squared plus 1, like that. All right, I still need to do di f di z dz dt. And that's going to give me, let's see here, di f di z. Uh, looking through, there's only one term in f that depends on z, and it's z itself. The derivative of that is going to be 1. dz dt was t squared, and the derivative of that with respect to t is simply 2t. And then finally, I want to find the partial of f with respect to t. And you go through, and it looks like if we treat the x and the y now as constants, I'm going to get sine x, uh, nothing, nothing, and uh, 3t squared. So let me go through and kind of label and just make sure that we understand where all this is coming from. Di f, di x. That's this thing right here. This thing is di f, di x. The next thing, just trying to kind of maybe color code it, I guess. I'm not really sure. dx dt, that's right here. This here is, oops, I said di, I mean d. There's only one variable, dx dt. The next one here, that is di f di y. I'm going to run out of colors here, so the joke's going to be on me. This here is dy dt. So that's this one right here. I'm just trying to show you that all of these different elements kind of match up with something from this formula. Di f di z. What color don't I have? I don't have like this beautiful light orange yellow. Di f di z. I can see is right here. That's di f di z. And dz dt, I haven't done black yet, so let's do black. That's this. And I can see that dz dt is the 2t. And then finally, I'll do light happy blue for the last one here. df di by dt is this right here, or di f dt. So all of those different objects are there. And um, that's how you would go about taking the total derivative. You can verify that this formula works for yourself and that it's really no different than um, chain rule as you know it. And here's how you can actually check that. I just zoomed out here a little bit so we can, we can talk a little bit about it. But essentially, I have expressions here for x, y, and z. x is this function of t. y is this other function of t. So is z. I could literally take those, plug it into f, and get this wildly complicated function of t and then take the t derivative of that. If I did, I should get exactly the same answer as I get here after I plug in the x, y, and z into what we wrote down right there. It's a whole lot of work though. So if you really wanna try that out and verify for yourself that the two are equal, go for it. It's for you to try. All right, let's try to take this concept though and apply it to the idea of this new kind of differential equation. So. This is all well and good, but what does it have to do with differential equations? And here's where the idea of an exact equation kind of gets born. So I want you to think of a situation where we have uh, the ability to write down a multivariable function equals c. So I'm gonna write down uh, a, a sort, of, sort of expression that has both x's and y's and say that that is equal to c. Okay, where c is a constant. I'm going to take that and I'm going to take the, the total derivative of both sides. If I take the total derivative of both sides, well, I have that phi depends on x and y. And if I'm thinking of y as being dependent on x, then y depends on x. And I have a, a total derivative that is goes down each of the branches, right? Um, di phi di x plus di phi di y dy dx. Those are the two branches of that tree. And you can see that's exactly what I have on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have the derivative of a constant, which is 0. So if I have phi of x, y equals c, and I take d, dx of both sides, this is what I get to right here. And this looks like a differential equation because I have derivatives in play in an equation. So 
uh, if I have a differential equation of this form, I automatically know that phi of x, y equals c is going to satisfy that. And that's going to possibly implicitly define solutions to the differential equation. The question is going to be, well, how the heck do you figure out what the phi is, right? How do I identify the function phi of x, y from looking at the differential equation? And it's going to come down to this, right? We have di phi di x and di phi di y there. And if you happen to know that one of them is the x derivative of the solution and the other one's the y derivative of the solution, you can kind of use that information to kind of think backwards and get to uh, what the actual phi should be. And that's going to be a big part of our solution technique for this. So with all of this kind of framework, we're going to define this new kind of differential equations, which you should already know the name of because it's the name of the chapter, but exact equations. So we're going to define what an exact DE is here, and it's this. So a DE in the form of, we're going to be using M's and N's because that's just what people do here. So we have M of XY, so a function of X and Y, plus N of XY dy dx equals zero. This thing is called exact if there exists a function phi of XY such that its total derivative with respect to X gives us the left-hand side, okay? We still have to figure out what, under what conditions that's true and so on. But if that's true, then the left-hand side is going to look exactly like it did on the last page, and it's going to equal zero, which means that if I match those, those pieces up and I see what pieces kind of are corresponding to the dy dx and, and so on, that m must be equal to di phi di x, the n must be equal to di phi di y. And the solution, if we step backwards to where we started originally, that was phi of x, y equals c, where the c is any constant. As I said, it's tough to know when this is true, right? It's easy to say, oh, it's exact if this is true. But luckily, there is a test to see if an equation is exact, and it's this. So if we look at the bottom of the page here, the test says this, a differential equation is exact if and only if you take the m and its y derivative is the same as the x derivative of n. So the y derivative of the m has to be equal to the x derivative of the n. And it's a little bit of a mouthful there too, but I want you to, to kind of think about the logic behind this. Just above, we defined m to be equal to di phi di x. I'm going to write that down right here, right? So note, so m was equal to di phi di x. So if I write down di m di y, that's really taking the derivative with respect to y, uh, oops, the derivative with respect to y of di phi di x, which is equal to the second derivative of phi with respect to uh, what? Um, x and then y, like this. Meanwhile, on the right here, n we defined in the paragraph above as being di phi di y, if we match it up to the page before and so on. But in that case, if I'm using this test here, the x derivative of the n the x derivative of the n is the x derivative of this thing. And that is going to be, that is going to be di squared phi di x di y. And so you see what this test is saying is, I want to make sure that this quantity on the left here is equal to this quantity on the right here. And that should be a familiar sort of result if you've taken a little bit of multivariable calculus. So really, we're just checking to see if this relationship is true, if those mixed partial derivatives are equal to one another. And that is related to something that is called Clairaut's theorem, which you may or may not have seen. Uh, some people will talk about it a little bit in multivariable calculus. And it basically says that those mixed partials are the same for most functions that are, have certain continuity considerations and stuff. Not going to get into super lots of detail there. 
So there's one last thing I wanted to note, uh, just because you may see it in other courses and so on. Uh, we won't really define that uh, 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 here. I won't use this notation very often. But if I write m plus n dy dx equals zero, some people will take this and write it like m equals minus n dy dx. For a moment, they'll think of the derivative as the differential, like as in both the dy and dx represent small quantities of something, and they'll multiply it up, which again kind of bothers people like me from time to time, but I, I'm easy. Let's... And then I can bring this to the other side and get m dx plus n dy equals zero. And see, that's what this is right here. So this here might also represent an exact equation, um, but it's just written in a slightly different way. So um, hopefully you're able to sort of follow. It's always interesting to do a little bit of abstract theory, uh, but from here, we're gonna use this and apply it to a couple of examples. And I'll kind of show you how I like to approach these problems. Uh, I think it's a more complicated solution technique than you're used to. So it will take a little bit of practice. Um, but I think in those examples, you'll kind of see that thought process. Students tend to practice it really well and get really good at it. And I think you will be able to too. So I will see you in the next video. Uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, good luck studying and hopefully this was useful to you.